Alrighty, let's take a look here at where you're at in your project on lesson seven. Okay. In level number three is where you started adding all of the CSS properties you wanted. So as you can see on mine, I decided to put a background color in. I've changed the font. I've got kind of a lot on here. One thing that I want you to watch out for is because I've seen this happen in the past. I have one rule for paragraphs. Don't add another rule for paragraphs down here. You start adding in all the properties in between these curly brackets. Everything for properties in one rule set. Same thing. All of your H1 properties, put them all together in between these two curly braces. If you're doing anything with a different heading, I happen to have H3s put all those properties together. Same thing with your list. Okay. If you want a background color that floods the entire page, then use the tag body and then put in that background color. Now me personally, um, just to show you what it looks like, if it's different, the difference between color and background color, if I put a background color in here for the um, paragraphs only. And let's say I did something, I'll just pick something obnoxious like aqua. See what happens? It only puts that background color just on that element, okay? Just on the paragraphs. I don't want to do that, so I'm going to get that out of there. I just wanted one simple plain background for the whole page. That's why I chose to put that in a separate rule set for body, okay? Now, Looking at the rubric, which hopefully you've kept, okay, I'm just going to go and check off and make sure you have everything. Is all of your HTML good? There's no pink code. So as I come over here and look in my index.html file and I scroll through here, no pink code. Now, does that mean everything's perfect? Well, no, not necessarily. You know, make sure that all of your content is after the body tag, which is probably around line six, and that it ends before the closing body tag, which is going to vary depending on how many lines of code you have. Okay. Try to make use of using enters to make your code easy to read. So like I have just on one line, my H3 heading, then I have all of this as a paragraph. Okay. Okay, but then I started a new line when I wanted a new heading and so on. Okay, so my HTML looks good. Next, I have to have three or more rule sets in the style sheet. So I'm going to the style sheet. I have a rule for body, paragraphs, my H1 heading, my H3 headings, and my unordered list. So I actually have five. Cool, I met that criteria. Do I have two or more colors besides black? Yes, I have a background color of this yellow. Um, you might not be able to see it here, but I can show you the code. My H1 heading is a purple color and my H3 headings are actually a dark green color. All right, and then my main <clears throat> paragraph text is black. So I really have four different colors. Cool. Got the color component taken care of. Do I have two or more text properties? Text properties. So I'm going to scroll through everything and start going through and look for text. Oh, text align, text decoration, text align, another text decoration. I've got four that I'm using. I'm good there. Do I have font properties? Okay, one, two, three, four. By the way, I also counted that letter spacing here, which I think I had a letter spacing right there. I said that will count. Okay. Uh, let's see. Font properties. Okay. Let's see. I've got lots of them. Font family, font size. Here's another font family, font size, font family, font family. Cool beans. Got that covered. No problem. Am I including any identifiable personal information? On mine, I'm just talking about myself, why I loved musical theater, um, Black Dirt Theater, which is in our town. That has, I, it is identifying this community 
of Hastings, but it's not giving away personal information about where I live or anything like that. So that looks good. You know what I did forget to do though? My favorite, favorite property is Tech Shadow. So guess what? I'm going to throw it in here. Text dash shadow. Here we go. All right. So I've got purple there. And so um, I think I usually do a two pixel for a horizontal shift, another two pixel for a vertical shift. Now look what it did. It made it look kind of blurry, blobby, kind of like a double stamp. And then I'm going to do a 5px for the blur. Okay, now let's see what that looks like. Do you like it in purple? I kind of do. Could change the color. Let's see what happens if I went to like white. Oh, that's not even noticeable. Don't like that. Okay. Um, if I went dark green, like I have for the, the heading, do you like that? Hmm. It almost kind of interferes and makes it more difficult to read. I might leave the color off so that it will default to just be the purple like that. And it kind of gives that powdery, blurry look. I'm going to leave that in there. Okay. All right. So there's your checklist. Those are the things we're looking for. And um, when you get done, now notice this is on level three. Okay. I'm going to hit finish here. On the last level of level of lesson seven I'll say make sure you have all your content you have your html structure you have your css properties and make sure there's no pink code there was nothing pink on mine here nor in the html so when you're done you're going to hit this finish button and what shows up for grading purposes is then when i go to look i'll see that four is filled in that means you intentionally hit finish and then that means that it can be graded already all right i hope you've had some fun playing with color and learning how to program in cascading style sheets